Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today is gonna be kind of a different one. So I'm thinking a lot of you guys might not even be interested in this, but if you see the beginning of my channel, I did a lot of journal vlogging, which was more for me than anybody and you know, my family could see it and whatnot. And people that were in that experience of moving abroad to a spot you've never been. And today is kind of another one. It's just kind of a recap of coming back because I've been out of America for like, consistently five and a half some years a total of seven but i did come back for like a week and a half two weeks and i remember like five years ago when i came back here i was i want to say homesick and it wasn't that i was like missing vietnam or asia or japan or any of those places but it was just everything was so different if that makes sense the culture the noise the foods the way people acted what you woke up to, what you went to sleep to. And I don't mean people, but I'm talking about like noise, weather and stuff like that. And I wanna do a video today just talking about how it is. Today marks my first week back in America as like a permanent thing. Cause I don't, I personally don't plan on going back to Vietnam. Uh, and I keep getting these comments and I've got questions from family. Yesterday I went, I wish I recorded it, but they didn't want to be recorded. But I went out and hung out with some of my Vietnamese friends out in Portland and we were talking a lot about Vietnam and a lot of them their parents came here not them So the, I think there was a couple he and a couple others that were actually Vietnamese born and they moved here like under the age of 18 But the rest of them like the other like 10 or 15 I was like 13 or 14 of them that were their second generation Americans. So their parents are from Vietnam obviously and we were talking about a lot of them And they all said the same like shit. Can I cuss on this? I don't care but they were all confused on how I did it for seven years because everybody here Vietnamese that I know and maybe I just have a narrow-minded circle I don't know but they don't like Vietnam and they don't like the government they don't like the rules they don't like the noise they don't like the pollution they don't like anything about Vietnam except it's cheap and that was kind of the comment everybody said to me They're like no oh, if, you, if you're gonna write down a good or bad list so we started writing down like this is kind of a funny exercise I really wish I recorded this but we took a, one of the napkins at this Buffalo Auto Wings. We put a line down, good, bad, right? Told them out. And we each wrote down one good, one bad thing about Vietnam, because we've all been to Vietnam. I was just the one that just never left, <laughs> you know what I mean? So we all wrote down like good is a bad. And this is what was crazy. And I'm gonna see if I have that napkin still, is the good stuff, almost everybody put shopping. And mind you, this is a blind thing. So everybody kind of wrote and they couldn't see what other people wrote. Everybody put shopping almost. Everybody. Uh, I think it was me and one other guy that put something different. And I put ease of travel. Like you get on a bike and just go. You can't really pull that off in the States as easy because there's so much country. Like if you just look around me, there's just so much open space that you can't pull that stuff off. So to get into the video, what is it like being back after work? Like being back after a week? And I have to admit the culture shock, I mean, I'm even squatting. <laughs> like I just can't get over it. But what is the culture shock value going on? And I have to say, moving to Vietnam, I grew up in a Vietnamese culture. My whole life has been Vietnamese. I was speaking Vietnamese, Southern dialect shit since I was like 12. And I mastered the northern dialect in Vietnam. You guys can see the old videos where I say learn Vietnamese in 30 days. That was me learning northern. And it was harder than I thought it would be because I just figured it was an accent, a few sounds like Lagi and Lazi and stuff like that. But it was a lot more. And the slang is way different. So, but I've always grown up in the culture. I've always known Vietnamese culture. I mean, shit, I even gang banged at one point, which is completely stupid, but I'm an 80s kid. So what, what can you say, right? I have to say, coming back to America was the biggest culture shock. It wasn't going to Vietnam. Because Vietnam is more of like a, what the hell is going on? What is all this noise? What is all this? Like, there's food everywhere. Why are all these people trying to sell me sunglasses? It is seriously raining. You know, like, that was what I felt when I got there. And it wasn't other stuff. You know, like, everything was cheap. I'm going to sit down and give up. But everything was cheaper and whatnot. Coming back to America, the cost was more expensive, obviously. Like, my second day back, I went to Safeway to go buy a bunch of groceries. And it blew my mind that I spent like $140 on food for like, I mean, I almost went through it already. It was less than a week, you know. And yeah, I do, I eat or, or, organic food and I, I mind my health. So I, it's obviously going to be a little more expensive. But the cost, 
really got to be in America. Like, Jesus, why is everything so expensive? Uh, gas is almost like $4 a gallon out here near Seattle, which is ridiculous. Um, I don't know what that is in liters, I'm sorry. I'm assuming it's, stu it's a stupid number, <laughs> whatever the case might be. But other things, the noise, like it, it's, it's irking me how quiet it is. It is so quiet out here. I don't get it. How is this possible? Like right now, I'm at the famous park that I keep going to, but how is it possible to be this quiet? It's just insane to me because this is a very populated area. It is quiet. Like that's kind of something that's got to me. Like it's hard to get used to. It's hard for me to sleep because I'm used to sleeping in noise. And now I sleep in just quiet, calm. You know, sometimes I'll hear the wind outside, but that's it. I don't hear honking. I don't hear yelling. I don't hear karaoke till 2 a.m. I don't hear drunks. I don't hear any of that. I don't hear restaurants. I don't hear bop salade. None of this comes up. Uh, the next big one is driving. Driving has blown my mind. Um, I, I'll, if I remember, I'll put a picture up on how much I walk. I walk about tw 10 to 15 to 20,000 steps a day. So I really try to walk a lot. You guys have noticed these videos I have. I've got some new headphones just to kind of do me over. But I I think I personally are am a problem to traffic. Like I cause accidents almost to the point where like people pull out to like turn and they back up for me to go or they stop and I stop and jump back. I mean, I've stopped in the middle of the roads and just like looked. Like, is it okay? Is it okay? During the crossing process. Or when people are trying to take a right turn, they wait for me. Because if you hit a pedestrian in America, you go to jail. There's no... Whose fault was it? It was you go to jail. Or you get in trouble at least, right? So when those situations come, I jump back and tell them to go. And then I had one guy yesterday yell at me. He's like, and he just said, fucking go! Like, he got annoyed with me. And it, I literally just stopped for a few seconds. So this guy apparently had a bad day already. But traffic is a huge one for me. Again, it's quiet. Nobody's honking, which is really nice. I can walk a lot. But the fact that people stop, people are aware of what's going on around them. People are slowing down for people that walk in. The Walking where I'm at isn't a big thing. There's a few old people here and there. I found out, I don't know if you guys can see it, that apartment complex. Yeah, it just looks like a white sky. <laughs> but it's a retirement home. So a lot of the older people come out and do like this stroll around this park area, which is really cool. But past that, there's not a lot of walking out here or like free range. You know, I mean, you have the homeless people, the people by the freeway trying to bump money and stuff. But past that, it doesn't happen much. But still, the people are courteous to people walking around is what I'm trying to say. So, I mean, that's kind of where it's it. Like the amount shit stuff costs. I, I know, obviously, it's America, David. Everything costs more in America, David. Vietnam is one of the poorest economic countries on the planet, David. I get that. But... I guess when you live in Vietnam for so long and you come back to America, it's just kind of like, God damn, seriously? $5 for a dozen eggs? You know what I mean? Like, I used to pay, like, what, an egg cost me, like, 2000 So I paid, like, what, a dollar for a dozen eggs? Like, real duck eggs? Like, and as they hear duck eggs, I can't even find as easy, which is kind of lame because, you know, they're super healthy compared to chicken eggs. But I can't find them right now, so I gotta go find a farmer's market, which is cool that you even have that option. So, like that traffic and just how people are, people are very courteous out here, which is kind of confusing to me. Like they're always apologizing for bumping into you, they're kind of letting you walk by. I don't know if this is because of COVID, like they just don't want to be around other people, but it's like there. And final one, I think, because I think I go on for a while, the final one is just skin, my health. I'm eating organic. I which you kind of do in Vietnam anyways, because they don't use a lot of pesticides from a lot of my farmer friends that I know. But I'm eating healthy, everything's organic. Um, I'm eating a little more. My first four days, I won't lie, I was pounding rock stars and eating eat, eat pizza, Doritos, Taco Bell, Jack in a Box. Well, I haven't got the Jack in a Box yet, but I did it because I want to know if it was as good as I remember. And I'm gonna tell you, Taco Bell is not as good as I remember. Beer tastes like shit, Blue Moon is crap. I still don't drink, I had one sip and I hated it. Um, even last night, everybody was drunk but me and, and the people's wives. But I started realizing how ri ridiculous people are when they get drunk and how stupid they sound. So that, that was kind of a weird thing. But yeah, Taco Bell tastes like crap. Uh, Burger King tastes the same as it does in Vietnam. McDonald's tastes the same as it did in Vietnam. Like, they just have that traditional following of taste, right? But yeah, a lot of stuff. Doritos aren't as good as I thought they were. Why are their bags half full of air Doritos? In Vietnam, they're full. Like, that stuff got to me. But past that, man, I love it, man. I'm, I'm gonna do another video here in a couple days, probably. 
I know I have like the driving one I'm still working on. I suck at editing or I'm really slow one of the two. But I'm getting bored and I'm ready to travel again. Like I said to a lot of people that try to insult me about, oh, you miss Vietnam. Vietnam doesn't want you, stuff like that. Understand, I just went to Vietnam to travel. That was never the final spot. This channel is called Endless Travel. Okay, so I, I don't know if I need to explain English to people, but end means the end of it, right? But list means not the end, means forever, infinity, right? I'm not gonna travel forever, obviously. I'm gonna find a spot. And to you guys that help me with the, with the crypto, or whatever is that place called, crypto or crypt, that island south of Turkey, you guys that gave me that advice, thank you, and got me in a rabbit hole a couple days ago, last night, that I couldn't get out of. I'm gonna visit that place here this year or maybe beginning of next year. Everything depends on COVID. Unfortunately, I, I, I'm i looking at traveling. Like, I can't go anywhere, man. In these places, I'm looking at, because I, I have decided I'm gonna be going, you know what? Next video, I'll tell you where I've decided to go because there is a destination of countries and languages that I want to hit up, which is gonna bring up another series. I want to do a learning a language in three months. I'm gonna push it. Uh, I learned Vietnamese pretty fast because I grew up in the community. I had to, and then I lived in Vietnam. I had to. So I don't take that as fair because I was my immersion was over 9,000, as the kids say. So it was kind of crazy. Anyways, I'm going to end this video. I'm talking too damn much. But let me know in the comments below what you think. Like, have you come back to America well, from any country? What is that biggest culture shock for you coming back to America? And let me know. I'm, I'm actually very, very curious because I'm still surprised that I'm having this culture shock coming back to America than compared to when I went to Vietnam. There was almost no culture shock at all. When I went to Japan, no culture shock. Singapore, Malaysia, no culture shock to me. But maybe it's because I grew up in an Asian culture that it's just normal to me. And I expected it. I don't I don't know. Like I grew up in the culture because I had no choice. It wasn't like, oh I have this yellow fever and I'm obsessed with Asian people. And I know a lot of these comments I see, I see these in these people's words. That's not me. I was forced to. I grew up in a very poverty-based Vietnamese Chinese community. And I had to get up and get out. And I had to hustle. And that, that's what it brought me to. So it's what it is. So, But let me know in the comments what you thought about the culture shock from another country back to America. But until then, guys, I'm going to end this. This is longer than I expected. But hit that subscribe button, guys. Your support is dope. I literally almost hit 100 subscribers. I know that sounds stupid. This channel, 35 days ago, had three subscribers. One of them was me, one of them was my mom. Hi, mom. And one of them was somebody I don't know. I think it was a spam account because they had like two subscribers and all they did was post like marketing videos. So ideally I've gained like 90 some subscribers this month. And it means a lot because it means I'm doing something that you guys care about, that you want to listen to, that brings you value. And that's the whole point of this. I mean, obviously I recorded the videos for Purse journal, Journals, as I said before, and I started uploading them like a year after I recorded them. So, and that's why you'll see the time gap where I always say I've been in Vietnam for seven years, but the videos only run like five and a half years old is because I didn't know what to do with them, but I just, I didn't want to write and I want to record the experience, right? Um, so that's kind of where that is. So let me know on, on that, but the subscribers, you guys have been awesome. I, I so much appreciate the support and it's motivating and I want to keep pushing these different countries and do different things. I have some crazy ideas for my traveling. Two of them are out. Out, out of control. My sister said I was ridiculous. The other one is going to cost me half a million, but I'm very, very determined on it. We're going to make it happen, but I am ready to move and get going. So either way, thank you guys for the support. Smash that like button. It does help out a great deal. Leave the comments. Guys. Ooh, I love talking to you guys. I'm trying, I've replied to about 95% of people. A lot of people just say stupid things. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to insult nobody. I know there's no stupid questions. But when you sit there and insult me and say I'm obsessed with Asian people or Vietnam is the best country and I deserve to be kicked out, like those kind of comments are ignorant and they're stupid. And, and I can t introduce you to about 300 Vietnamese people in America that will tell you very different about Vietnam. But I respect Vietnam as a country and I love that country, dude. I really do love Vietnam. It was my favorite spot out of Southeast Asia next to Japan and Singapore. I'm not going to lie. I loved it. But would I ever retire there? You guys are crazy. <laughs> I'm never going to retire in Vietnam. And if I do it, will I ever go back? I, I probably will come visit on a tourist visa maybe in a couple years. But I had my fun, Vietnam. And I love you for what you you offered me, Vietnam. And I appreciate everything, all of you, friends, family, government, anybody that sees this that was part of Vietnam when I was there, I appreciate you. I really do. 
but I'm never gonna live there permanently. I'm sorry. It, it was never a thing and it's not my thing. If it's your forte, go for it, man. And do you. And I love to hear what's going on there when you guys wanna leave the comments. But past that, I'm gonna do videos on Vietnam because I have like 30 subjects I'm just, I wanna get through. God, 15 minutes already, sorry. Anyways, smash that like button, guys. Leave the comments, I'm outta here. See you again.